for all of them. This time the families asked me, I thought it was a good idea, they're going to have it very informal, but obviously I think this is more personal, we're going to have everyone get up and speak and say some words extemporaneously from the heart. And if you want to be videotaped, please come up here, the microphone's on if you want to utilize it. We'll put this on our website later. The families also asked them to sign the book and take a prayer card. There's an email if you want to send a personal note, and everyone is invited back to the house after our services, which might be 15 minutes, 30 minutes. But at this time, everything's opened up. If someone would like to just come forward, again, if you want to be videotaped, if you're in a witness program, you don't want to be videotaped, then send you back. But if you want to speak, if you want to come forward, the microphone is on. At this point, please. <laughs> the book and cards are over here and an email and address to the house. I'm a dear old friend of Lou's. He was a special friend of mine. And he had a friend in Poland. Paul Trim was his best friend. Can you hear me? Yes. He was his best friend. They taught together. Paul was a music teacher and Lou was a shop teacher at Sanford. Yeah, Sanford. And uh, they developed a keen friendship for each other. Paul was now uh, retired and living in Poland. So he asked me to give this uh, a little note about Lou. Oh, sure it goes away. Thank you for thinking of me and reaching out with this terrible news. I considered Lou to be one of my dearest friends. He was a man of integrity, brilliance, unlimited skills, and deep compassion. My entire family are mourning the passing of this wonderful human being. And he was. and to welcome us to the neighborhood. Lots of fond memories of both of them. Um, I remember Halloween. We had always had a lot of kids, so I had several bags of the little candies. Kyle and Kelly came over. They were our only trick-or-treaters. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I gave each one a little candy. And when nobody else showed up, the next day I put the bags in their mailbox. <laughs> um, although one or two years, they came with the Schlesinger children on the back of a tractor. And Lou drove them around on the tractor. And that was fun. That was unexpected and so different. Um, my husband Mike has Parkinson's and can't be here. It's very sad. Being a little bit close over the years, very, very different political opinions. <laughs> um, Mike is very conservative, Lou not so much. Yeah. They would have arguments sometimes, yelling at each other, usually at Lou's house, because they built a gazebo outside the house. So that I, used, I worked in the city and I often worked late, so Mike would go over to Lou's house and they would sit around, eat vegetables from each other's gardens, argue about who had the best vegetables. <laughs> and they said, well, gee, let's build a little gazebo so that we're covered when it rains. And gosh, we can get electric out here and have a television. <laughs> and they would watch, who was that girl? She does a lot of a cooking show. Julie Chuck. No, not Julie Chuck. Rachel. Rachel. Oh, Rachel. 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 I think it might have been Rachel Gray. And they would watch her religiously every day. <laughs> I might have come home and tell me what we should be having for dinner. <laughs> but um, the gazebo is still there. 
a little worse for wear, unfortunately, um, since Mike hasn't been able to get out. He wasn't able to get over. But Lou certainly is a giving person. We knew he'd had heart trouble. And my husband had four falls in November. The ambulance came twice, and they said, if this keeps happening, you're going to have to think about putting him in a home. So when he fell after that, like Thanksgiving morning at 8 o'clock, Lou and another neighbor came over to help him get up off the floor. And then after that, when he fell, and the other neighbor wasn't available, Lou and I were able to get him up. And we have a slate floor, and it's uneven. So after that, we put yellow tape down so he'd be aware of where it was uneven. But Lou had to have known that he was not well. But he was still willing to come over and lift this large man. Um, you know, if he saw me outside doing something in the yard, knowing that I couldn't do it, he'd, he'd come popping over across the street. Can I help you? What can I do for you? Um, so he will be missed, and he would come in the house from time to time, and he and Mike would talk about politics and disagree. Though recently it never got to where they would argue like they did <laughs> 20 years ago. But um, he will be missed, I think, by everybody. Kelly and Kyle, you're just so lucky to have had him in your life. Thank you. Actually, I'm going to add to her story. That was, I lived on the left side of Luke Hall. I was the neighbor to face in the house to the left. My kids, I boy to grow, grew up with Kelly and Kyle. We were the ki my kids were the kids on the tractor that oh. was in your house for two years. <laughs> and it was an amazing experience. I'm glad you brought it up because I remember thinking, oh, this is great, trick or treating, how cool, the kids will get candy. What I didn't know was every house that we visited, gave us a drink, <laughs> a glass of scotch, a glass of wine. By the time I got home, I was so loaded. My kids were happy. <laughs> I was drunk. But I loved the experience. And that's, Lou was fun. Lou was creative. Lou was a man with old-fashioned um, ideals. He was a simple man. I first met him, I thought he was a farmer. He plowed the fields, he grew stuff. Jane with, with canned stuff. I mean, they had fruit trees. I mean, I figured if I was going to survive in the neighborhood, I'd always eat well being next to them. <laughs> Beside that, Mike was across the street, and I knew if I needed protection, he was heavily armed. <laughs> Three tours of Vietnam. I, I got the best neighbors in the world. I, I love being there. And, and it's, uh, qualities Lou had, as, as everybody's brought up, he, he was an honest man. Lou wouldn't cheat anyone. He was generous. Gave of his time. When he worked for somebody, he built fair. In fact, he built too fair. He only charged when he was on the job work, never buying stuff or gave stuff at cost. He just was an honest man. And it was second instinct. He never thought about cheating people. And even when people didn't want to pay him, he didn't make a big deal out of it. You know, he just accepted it. Kind of complained a little on the side, but he moved on. <laughs> Ethics, um, he had a ton. Um, I don't know firsthand about him as a teacher, but he often talked about his way and method of teaching, which was explain to him the safety, the procedures, how to do the cuts. You know, It wasn't the result, not necessarily the table or whatever you were building, but how you got there and how you learned and that you always were safe and understood the principles. And, um, I love working with Lou um, because every time I did, I learned something. And uh, that always amazed me. You know, he just had a way of explaining things simple. And you'd like him to do it because he was more skilled. More or less, he made you do it and you were better for it. Um, and I'm better as a man because Lou was in my life. Um, he was a kind man. Um, he was generous with his time. He would help anybody, a stranger. If he knew a stranger needed help, Lou was there. He'd help friends, 
Uh, he donated his time, you know, Habitat for Humanity. They never thought twice. Thought it was a job. I kept saying, you get paid. No. <laughs> you don't have to go. They don't pay you. But, you know, they depend on you. And that was Lou. You know, he, he was a kind man. Um, he, uh, he was a good husband. You know, took care of the kids and Jane. Good food always. Kept a roof over their head. It might leak, but the roof was there. <laughs> um, he, he was knowledgeable. Besides being a great teacher and work with them, he knew his history and his past, and he was always proud of it. Proud of his Bucks County heritage. He knew all about Bucks County. He knew about his family. He knew where the family names came from. He knew everything. When he spoke about the house they lived in, you know, how long did you live in the house? Never said this was my house, our house. It was Jane's uncle's house, who was part of, was it the Walton family that had the big farm? He had the whole history of the neighborhood. He never just got, you know, when he bought the house forward. He always got the history. And, and it was kind of cool. Even my wife was going to start a, like a, a game because Lou knew so much about Bucks County. <laughs> we figured he'd make a fun game. But he liked us too soon. Um, he loved food. Loved to eat. Eat well. Always made my wife feel special. The meal was great. It tasted good. My wife, she's Italian. Do you want seconds? Oh, sure. If it's not too much trouble. We never had leftovers. We ate the rest. <laughs> Kelly took, took the leftovers from Kelly's house. She never had a chance. <laughs> Love food. And you know what? It made you feel good to feed him. He has stories of growing up and an uncle or somebody living behind him, and he'd go back there and get second dinners. And, you know, it, just, it was the way he was. Um, he loved animals, as you see in the pictures. You know, dogs, cats, Oscar, of course. Um, raccoons. <laughs> raccoons. Who has a pet raccoon? Lude it. And he was proud of this little thing, and he raised it. So one day I'm in the driveway talking. The little raccoon comes over, Lou and I, and I had a beard. Lou had a beard. And the thing starts crawling up my leg, and I'm thinking, how cute this thing's getting close to me. So it got up to my shoulder and looked into my face and realized I wasn't Lou. <laughs> and what, Lou just sat there and laughed at it. He thought it was me. I'm like, I think they was going to scratch me. Ah, it, it only hurt for a little bit. He scratches me all the time. <laughs> he loved animals, animals loved him. And it was a special connection he had. He loved people. He loved talking to strangers, strike up a conversation or anything. Loved his friends, but when you knew about his friends, you knew the past of their friends, how they met, where they came from, if it was college or whatever. Um, he loved, loved people, and Lou loved his family. Um, very proud of you, Kelly, Kelly being the oldest. Proud of how smart you were in school. Proud of you being a cheerleader. He was proud of you as a woman when you got married and became a mother. A great spot in his heart, and you were so good to him after your mother passed away. You were that stable thing that your father needed, and you gave it to him. You know, and he felt very close. Kyle, his son, grew up with him. Always was the one. When Lou had to work, Kyle was in. Kyle was in the truck, Kyle was on the job. Whether Kyle wanted to be there or not was <laughs> not important. But you always learned something. Even when you didn't want to be there, you learned something. And then later on, when you're a man, skills just naturally come out because you were exposed to a man of, of great knowledge. Lou was a, is a great man. Um, we'll never replace him. You know, but we'll surely miss him. Hello everybody, my name's Brock. I've uh, been friends with Lou for well over 20 years. Uh, him and I had a special relationship and I, I, I thought maybe uh, it would be consoling to hear some, a couple, couple brief stories uh, about Lou. I mean, we all know he was compassionate, he was loving, um, respectful, honest, he had ethics. Um, his neighbors loved him. I, I met a few of them actually uh, over the years. Uh, my relationship with Lou uh, was always project-oriented. We were always doing something together. 
whether we were cleaning up his uh, his tree mess or or fixing the the roof on uh, Kelly's apartment, uh, putting up another temporary shed. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lou, Lou had a special way about how we did things. You have the professional way, and you have the cheap way, and then there was Lou's way, <laughs> um, which was always quality, especially when it comes to projects for himself and for me. Um, he taught me things. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't want it back, but I believe that screwdriver's mine. <laughs> um, I'm quite sure I have a few of his tools in my garage as well. Um, but we all, we all know how Lou was. That's why we're here. We're celebrating his life through these pictures. Uh, we're remembering all those good times. The world is a worse off place because he's gone. I try not to look at it like that. I look at it that the world is a much better place because he was here. Um, he'll always be here. He'll be with you. Um, he'll be with you, Kyle. He'll be with his grandchild. All the people he touched. He was a teacher, a father, a husband, a friend, uh, a mentor. He was a mentor as well to me when we, when we did things. <laughs> um, but as a parent, um, in the gazebo, uh, we spent many a times there after our projects. Uh, I was like, hey, how's Kelly doing? Every single time, his eyes would get bigger. You could see the pride swell up in him. And he would tell me how you were doing. Kyle, same thing. Hey, how's Kyle doing? Is he ever going to come get those Mustangs? <laughs> but you could see the pride that he had in his family. The pride that he had. Uh, in his house in Percocet where he grew up in, where I, I, I lived in that house for a while, um, and the house that uh, he then owned. And again, he did talk about who owned it before, where it came from, how it got passed down until he got it. He was very much into history. But let's go back to the gazebo. So we're sitting there. Uh, the TV had long been rained on and didn't work. But we sat there, and uh, invariably he would bring out some weird beer. He always had weird beer. I don't know where he got this stuff from, but I do enjoy a beer. Uh, it was this summer. Um, he brought out two cans of Stroh's. Anybody know anything about Stroh's beer? Well, there's a reason why you don't. It hasn't been around in at least 10 years, maybe longer. Um, and these two cans of Stroh's had the pool cap. The pool top where you you know the time you step on and hurt your toe and uh after a hard days of work uh i can't remember what we were doing i think we were building one of the sheds the permanent one and um and the beer still tasted good because it had been refrigerated for probably 10 or 12 years <laughs> and uh, i would always uh, bring my beer down it but he wouldn't drink it because it was just yucky miller like <laughs> so he had some class when it came to choosing beer. So, um, but as, as you go forward, and I'm sure I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, um, Lou will always be in our minds, our memories, our past. We see pictures. Uh, we remember not things, but we remember feelings that we had with him, his family, his dog. I still want to call him Badger. Uh, I, don't, I have not <laughs> gotten past Badger passing, if you remember Badger, no, Oscar. Um, and just keep that with you, and um, he will be missed by me. And uh, every time I'm in the garage and I'm doing something and it's not going right, I'm going to think back to Lou and I will figure out a way to make it work. Joe Chamberlain, and Lou was Mr. Know-it-all. <laughs> Lou and I became friends while working at Chamonix. At first we were at odds with each other. Lou had the mindset that class time should be used for teaching. When the class was over, he would leave and leave the lab a mess. When Lou's uh, wife passed away, we began to spend time together. Lou would uh, still leave the lab a mess, 
he would state that he was paid to teach and not to clean. <laughs> we would buy rough cut lumber. He would have uh, the students surface and square the board with a jack plane. The floor would be littered with shavings. Before I could uh, start my class, I would have to sweep the floor and clear the benches. He left the print shop that we shared in the same condition. Lou was the kindest man I ever met. No matter how upset I was or uh, how misbehaved his students were, he would never retaliate. After a while, I would uh, be blowing off steam and he would just smile. All right, he would make this silly grin like he killed the cat. It was his way of ending an argument. Lou was the finest craftsman I ever met. There was nothing that he couldn't do. The furniture that he made was the very best quality. He was a master craftsman in wood, metals, power, and electricity. I can only best him with graphic arts. Lou went to Millersville while I went to Trenton State. It was a running argument between us which school was better. I don't think I ever won an argument with him. He would go on until he, was, he prevailed. That's why Lou was Mr. Know-it-all. <laughs> Lou felt that it was important to teach the process. He never cared what the project looked like. Lou knew the quality would improve when students gained experience. Lou would be more than uh, gruff with his different students. I would tell him, Lou, you can't say that. He would answer, I'd tell it like it is. <laughs> when we would meet his students outside of school, they would all greet him happily. Lou had a special way of communicating with kids. Some days, students would be absolutely horrible. The next day, he would treat them as though nothing ever happened. The students loved him for that. I called him a long-haired pink Okami. <laughs> he would proudly claim, or proclaim that he wasn't because he was a socialist. Lou called me a right-wing, flag-waving, pig-headed Trump idiot. <laughs> Whenever we would talk politics, he would argue until you agreed with him. I would tell him he shouldn't vote because I was going to cancel out his vote. <laughs> Lou loved animals, and whenever we uh, went, so wherever we went, so did his dog. My wife and Lou connected over dogs. At Christmas, I would give him a pack of pencils, and he would give a Scotty dog present to uh, my wife. It was a running joke that should I die first, he was moving in. <laughs> We shared an interest in classic cars. Together we went to car shows and swap meets. One day Lou showed me his 1965 Jaguar XKE convertible. We, um, we took, he took us a half hour to clear the car and roll it out of the garage. We worked on it for about an hour. We put a battery in it and to my amazement it started. We pushed it back into the garage and it never saw the light of day again. <laughs> it was always his plan to get it back on the road. It was no mystery that Lou was a hoarder. I told him one day if he dropped a paper, he would pick it up and keep it. He knew how to repurpose everything. When something was hopefully broken, he would never give up on it. It would lay there rusting, waiting for him to return to fix it someday. It was amazing. He knew where everything was even if it was in a general spot. My friend Lou was a wonderful, kind, gentle man. He would get his shirt off his back to help everyone, even if he didn't ask him to. The man simply didn't know how to say no. I'm glad to have known him and proud to have been his friend. And yes, he had some bad beer. <laughs> I'm Nick Culp, one of the uh, four cousins, and uh, I can remember back when, before I actually know me, I live in Florida now, so that the, uh, before I moved to Florida, Lou and I used to once in a while get together because we both had a common interest in construction, and if I needed help, Lou would help me, if Lou needed help, I'd help him, and together, like everybody's saying, he was definitely a perfectionist, and definitely, as one of the gentlemen who says, there's the, you know, the professional way, the cheap way, and Lou's way. And I, have to, I sort of smile at that because I sure remember that. 
and I know he taught me a lot of stuff, and hopefully I taught him a few things, but we really enjoyed it. And we had common interests because he, as you heard, Lou was a, a teacher. I was also a teacher early on, and we sort of worked weekends and summers and got ourselves through. And the other, so, and we remember Lou, you know, you know, when he was our, you know, small, going over to his uh, his parents' house on the night hill side, and I remember uh, going there and watching Bill Lake Knock and Nixon. That goes back a few years, or somebody remember that. And uh, also, you know, walking up the hill to his grandparents, so I guess it was his uncle also lived up there, and yeah. You know, playing with the, the, the dogs, and we had a great time over there. And he would come over to our place, and we lived uh, yeah, right, pretty close to actually within a quarter of a mile of his grandparents' house and my grandparents. And you know, we would Mommy? He'd come over here Mommy, and we go down to his parents, grandparents together. He was a great man. I was sorry to hear that he had, had, uh, had, had passed away. And just to the turf and three the two other cousins that are with us, we wish you all and hopefully he will, will never sound like he'll never never memory will never go away. To, to Kyle Kelly and the whole family. Um, Lou is really almost like a brother to my late husband. And agree with what everyone has said so far. Just a couple of things that stand out. One was that when we moved into a duplex about 40 years ago, and we couldn't move the queen size bed through the door. And it was out on the, f and Lou was with us. And so this queen-size platform bed was in the front yard, and we were all scratching our heads as to how to get it into the bedroom. And Lou had the brilliant idea, maybe this is Lou's way, he said, I'm going to saw the platform. I'm going to saw it in half. And then we can bring it upstairs, and he reassembled it. And we were in awe, and the movers were in awe. Nobody knew what to do. And Lou figured it out. So we sawed the platform bed in half. I might be able to find a picture. If I do, I'll, I'll give it to you. He sawed it in half. He brought the platform bed up to the bedroom. He reassembled it. And our move proceeded. I mean, and that was about 40 years ago. A more recent memory of, I guess, just my reliance on Lou and his help because uh, my husband also passed away. Someone mentioned Parkinson's. He passed away two years ago. And Lou, over the past two years, has really helped me maintain our home, which is quite old. And I had to buy a new refrigerator because the refrigerator died. And they came, they delivered a refrigerator, even though with all the supply chain issues, it wasn't exactly the right one, but they delivered it. It was supposed to have an ice maker in it. It wasn't working properly, so they had to come back. They put the ice maker together, and then after they left, they, the delivery people made a mistake, and water was gushing out all over the kitchen. And miraculously, I called Lou. Miraculously, he answered. <laughs> and the other miracle was that the delivery people were still parked outside the door because the next customer wasn't home, and so they were waiting in the van. And so I got them to come in. I had Lou on the phone with water gushing all over the kitchen floor. I didn't know where the shutoff valve was. I'm embarrassed to say, but I didn't. And it wasn't the main valve. It was another one. And Lou knows our house like the back of his hand. So he got on the phone with the delivery people. He walked him through where to go in the basement, which was through a crawl space. He shut off the valve. The water stopped gushing in the kitchen. And again, the problem was solved. Um, I mean, these are just two memories that stand out. I could say others, but his ethics, his kindness, they're just going to be with us for, for always. So those are just a few memories to share. <coughs> Thank you so much. Hi, 
Um, my name is John Cassell. I'm from uh, Habitat for Humanity. Um, Lou was with us for the past few years, about two or three times a week. And just, I want to echo everything that everyone said with his kindness, his heart, and just also uh, order mentality a little bit. Uh, I remember uh, he didn't want to waste anything. Um, we, I had a nightstand one day, completely almost falling apart. I'm about to throw it out. He's like, hey, we can fix this. I don't know how he did it. He had a hammer. He had a flathead. And he had like a screwdriver. I'm looking at this. This thing's like in 20 pieces. And like some of it's broken apart. Um, like there's wood coming out of everywhere. I'm like, this guy's not going to do this. Sure enough, we sold it for 25 bucks. <laughs> okay. But he was an amazing man. He would always talk about his family. And you guys, like everyone said, when he talked about you guys, just light, his eyes would light up. And 20 minutes later, when I need to close the store, he'd still be talking about it. <laughs> All right? So, it's gonna be missed. We're, we love him so much. We're gonna forever, he's forever gonna be a part of our hearts. And he left a short staff today. I wanted to just thank everybody for coming out. As you can see, you know, as we all know, that was very much loved. Um, I've been out in California for the last 18, 19 years, and I spoke to him very often on the phone, and it's very sad. There's, there's going to be a hole in a lot of our hearts moving forward. I feel like part of my confidence is gone. <laughs> I don't know. The next time I pick up a project, and my dad was you know, a great teacher, or we always have that. So many things that I, I meet people all the time and that just don't have nearly the amount of skills that Kelly and I have because of the father that we had. Um, you know, every time I do a project at my house in California, I'd always call him, even though I'd know exactly how to do it. Just, I always needed that confidence. He always, you know, I'd call him up, I'd say, you know, is this the right wire that goes here? And he'd say, yeah, you got it, you got it. But it's going to be, It'll be very different moving forward, um, but we do have all of that that will follow us till, throughout the rest of our lives. And we just wanted to thank everybody for coming. <clears throat> Anybody that wants to come back to Kelly's house, or you know, we'll be back there. And, uh, yeah. Um, so there's little pieces of paper that have um, my email address on it and our uh, house address for anybody that wants to join us afterwards. Um, for the email address, any memories or pictures or anything you didn't feel comfortable sharing here or just little stories you'd like to share, we'd love to hear them, see them, anything. So um, I guess, I don't know, we're just, it's hard to believe our dad was our person for everything. Thank you everyone for being here. Pay final respects and we'll proceed to your cars and so before the services. Again, on behalf of the family, I appreciate what you make it out today. Thank you.